unlimited power! Uh, no. Hi everybody, I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. And this is the Concept Crucible Podcast. And today we're going to talk about something that... Is unique to millennials. Yeah, I feel like it is. It, and it's something that, I mean, I only noticed it becoming a thing, say, in the last five years. But that's only because my age cohort started to deal with these unique problems. A.K.A. we started graduating from student life and into the real world. The real world, such as it in, is. In quotes, as though, as though school is some sort of mystical place. Yeah, well, I mean, it is, in some sense. Because once uh, once you leave there, you enter the world of adulting. I, I would make an argument that people in university are still adults. I think that that's I, I think they're adults cogent. in paper. Or on paper, like, they can vote and they can do all sorts of stuff like that. They're usually responsible for filing taxes. Um, but the consequences of being autonomous is not equally felt by everybody. Um, I would also make an argument that the consequences of being autonomous is not equally felt by anybody at any age. Fair. Uh, <laughs> but that is perhaps an argument for a different yeah. podcast. But yeah, it's, it's... I don't know. I think of adulting in the sort of, I, I guess, classical millennial way. And this is mm -hmm. the first and last time I'll ever use that phrase. Um, but as, as like all of the bits of being responsible for yourself that you don't want to do like more, more often than not, like, like the, like it's the, the bits where, you know, you're like, I, I, I can't, um, you know, these are responsibilities I can't ignore. Mm -hmm. Um, or, or not even responsibilities, but just tedium. Or, yeah, the the kind of background things that are not crises until they're crises. So, for example, when was the last time you went to the dentist? When was the last time you made an appointment to see the doctor? When Did was the last time you had the money to go see the dentist? Did your parents take care of that? Did they have insurance? Find out next time when we talk about, or actually it's this time, or, adulting. Yeah, I suppose. I, I think that you and I have different conceptions of it, which yeah. I think is going to shake out a bit. Yeah. Uh, but we should start with our icebreaker. Yeah. Um, what is the most embarrassing, like, straightforwardly grown-up adult thing that you do? Where, where, like, it is, it is so... Like bullshit, grown up, tedious, but you do it, and you're embarrassed by it. Mm. Um, embarrassed might be a little strong. Like I'm perfectly fine to admit that I do this, but it's kind of one of those BS things. I started doing it in January. Um, I started to feel tired about feeling tired all the time. <laughs> Fair. And like, I mean, in the context of. Uh, the, you know, the the mammoth huckle quantified self. Yeah, in in the in the context of September through December, you know, doing the three job thing and whatnot, um, I realized that I was tired of feeling exhausted or in a perpetual state of being exhausted, uh, and so I started to be more mindful of sleep, started to be more uh, ambitious about early to bed, early to rise kind of thing. Uh, the quantified self, so I started tracking my sleep. But I mean, that's largely helpful with the the hip the, the hip fit the fit bit. Um, so I track sleep. I'm just in the middle of a rough quarterly sleep analysis, um, and the early to bed thing helps out when when I rise early and I help Sarah out the door. Um, that I have an hour to myself to read books uh, at one point I was doing some light Coursera work trying to learn calculus mm. uh, exercising in the morning all those things to kind of set up my day for success all before showering and going to work so so it's not it's not quite embarrassing but relative to how I used to be of roll out of bed and just you know do the thing whether or not I brush my teeth or not I, okay I guess an embarrassing thing is like for a good 10 year stretch I didn't brush my teeth in the morning hmm. not, until, monster. not until Sarah's like I refuse to kiss you if you don't brush your teeth every morning mm. <laughs> I would just pop in a piece of gum and you're go, terrible and, demon man yeah and, and go to go to go to work or go to school so 
Yeah, I guess that's more embarrassing than the sleep thing, but... Anyways, that's that's uh, my embarrassing adult thing that I do. I don't know. I think I think I have two answers to this. Whoa, how huckle of you. Yeah, right? Um, it'd be easier if I could remember what my second one was, but I oh. got distracted by the fact that you're, you're, for a decade, you were a monster who didn't brush their teeth in the morning. Yep. Um, but uh, my first answer is, is, like, I am embarrassed by the amount of sanity that I regain by putting my laundry away. Like, I will stay up late. Like, I will stay up late doing whatever. Then I will stay up additionally late purely to put my laundry away. The life-changing magic of tidying up your laundry. Like, if my laundry has been sitting out in a laundry basket for four days, I am mortified. I assume that the rest of my life is is an, in an equal shambles. <laughs> and like there is there 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 will simply be no saving it unless I put my laundry away. Like as someone who who for a long time was content to just like leave that of the laundry basket. Mm-hmm. I have no idea what prompted this change. Mm. I didn't even get a new dresser or anything. I just, I see it, and I stare at it, Mm -hmm. and I'm like, and it represents all of the slovenliness of my being, Mm -hmm. and it must be put in order. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's, that's my, like, my 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 stay up late one night thing is just I, I will stay up late putting away my laundry mm-hmm. like a square. I can't remember what my second thing was. I promise you it was really funny, but cannot remember. Um, but it was e- it was equally embarrassing. I know that. Mm-hmm. See, so yeah, I, I like I think of adulting as as the. And we maybe talked about a, a bit about this in the preventative maintenance episode. Mm-hmm. In in as the the pieces of life that happen in between everything else, but the, that are also the pieces of life that like make a lot of other things possible. Mm-hmm. So I mean, you you mentioned doing your taxes. Um, I would file things like budgeting in there. Yeah, is like it's not fun. It's not, you know, you, you, you never, you, you're very rarely, you're like, do you like brag to your friends? You're like, I put together the fucking sickest budget <laughs> last I night. I don't know, sometimes. Let me tell you. Some of the circles that I run with. Let me tell you. Oh, I remember what my second thing was. Oh, oh wait, your weird budget? No, no, oh, okay. no, 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 no. It was worse than that. It's way oh. worse than that. I remember the moment I realized I was a grown up. Uh, a friend of mine had just gotten married. And we were talking in a pub, and uh, he had gotten a, a vacuum cleaner mm-hmm. for uh, for his wedding. It was a Dyson, and I remember remarking, "Oh, that's a good vacuum cleaner." Yeah, that's like you're gonna get some serious time out of that. And he's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna vacuum." And I it stopped for a moment. I'm like, "We are not talking about video games, politics." Or, you know, relationship. We're talking excitedly about a vacuum cleaner. Where did we go wrong? To be fair, it's a Dyson. Dyson's like a good quality. No, it's not, <laughs> no, that's not the point. The point is... It's well engineered. Who cares? You can You can appreciate the beauty of its engineering. No, also Dyson, if you want to send us money, go for it. Or... Several vacuum cleaners. Oh, one vacuum cleaner alone. You know, that's 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 what like five hundred dollars. <laughs> that's that's a lot of. I regret quality. every part of this conversation. Come on, bagless technology, whirlwind technology. Please God, make this stop. Anyway, um, HEPA filters. Yeah, you know, how how we <laughs> how how we how we sort of categorize adulthood and like 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 what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, like I don't think that it comes with an increase in responsibility. Mm, I, I yeah, think, it's, I think that like we are 
you know, like, like we're, we are responsible for the same kinds of things basically all the time. I think that it comes with more attention to that tedium and the idea that paying that attention and being mindful of, of that mm-hmm. has has side effects. And, yeah. and, and, like, relatively positive side effects. Yeah. Um, and part of that, I think, has to do with, you know, the notion of, of planning for the future. Mm-hmm. Well, and I think part of it is, is um, at least for me and others in a similar uh, position to me, um, the the transition to adulting, so to speak, comes with that final hurdle where, uh, with that, especially with the tedium stuff, that nobody else is going to take care of it for you. I mean, you could farm it out and pay somebody else to take care of stuff. Uh, but it finally comes to head that... You did your laundry in university, man. I mean, I did my laundry. That was fine. I, <laughs> I, I did my laundry straight from the start, like the get-go. I mean, I would bring it home with me, but I'd still oh. usually do it. Uh, well, it had to be done if I went Fair. home. Fair. Fair. And it Fair. didn't get done. But um, uh, I guess, like, for example, when my folks started... Uh, or, sorry, when my folks stopped monitoring my bank account to ensure that it needed to be topped up for groceries or whatever. You know, like, the, the, nobody was monitoring my bank account, so to speak. I'm currently in awe of your middle-class lifestyle. Yeah, no, I didn't, like... It is not something I have any experience with. Yeah, like, because my father co-signed on, on my student loans with the bank and stuff like that. They had access to my, my bank accounts and stuff, so... It wasn't really until the middle... Actually, here's an embarrassing one. It wasn't until probably grad school of when I finally found out how to log into the online account. Hmm. I just didn't know how to do it. And then finally figured it out. And then that was the easiest way for me to memorize what my debit card number was. Yeah, I... I, I guess it, it... I don't know, maybe it comes from from the, the, the fact that we apparently have vastly different, more, more different lives than I suspected. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I don't think of it as an increase in responsibility so much as an increase in mindfulness. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and being mindful of different things like mm-hmm. when when it was just me and i had classes and I, I didn't have any structure in my time or anything like that i didn't care as much mm-hmm. if my shit was a mess mm-hmm. and now i do because mm-hmm. I, I i do that thing where i like clean before people come over mm-hmm. uh, which is also i think like a straightforwardly bullshit adult thing to do because mm-hmm. i definitely recall having people over when I was in university and being like, I don't fucking care. This is my this is my life deal. Yeah. Well, I think um, there's it's not an increase in uh, responsibility, but um, you the consequences like you there's you have to you have to in some sense uh, own the consequences, right? Hmm. I don't know. I think I think maybe you're right in the sense that. Um, like you have to. We, deal we with assume the that, that, that well, and 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 I think that. There's like 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 that that seems really broad, but I, I maybe the the acknowledgement that you know this is not temporary. Mm-hmm. This is not you're 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 you know this is not a transitional period. Mm-hmm. This is this is the rest of forever. Mm-hmm. Uh, and realistically, every moment is the rest of, for, of forever. <laughs> but it's it's hard to think about it that way. Yeah. Um, I would I would articulate it as I would articulate now many things. Um as the distinction between uh, light bulbs and batteries or glory and honor. Mm-hmm. Uh, Molly Ostertag in uh, Strong Female Protagonist wrote about it and it's it's a super good comic and I will link it in the show notes. But it's the idea that, that batteries do way more for us than light bulbs. But we all, we all know about Edison and Tesla and the light bulb and all that. Who invented the battery? I actually legit don't know. I for, I didn't think of this analogy until, mm-hmm. uh, or to reference the analogy until we were already recording, and I didn't look it up. Mm-hmm. But batteries are incredible, mm-hmm. and batteries are are honorable. That work happens in sort of in sort of silence, in the same way that adulting work, like pays off. Like it pays to have a clean apartment, in the sense of, you know, it generally like for me it generally helps my peace of mind. Mm-hmm. I can find stuff when I'm looking for it. Mm-hmm. Um, when I when I have guests, I have better feelings about it, and that that, has, uh, that I think has more to do with 
my self-consciousness than it does with any sort of you know empirical fact mm -hmm. but insofar as it helps my self-consciousness that seems useful mm -hmm. um, budgeting and things like that are important because it means that you know if I if I need money I am more likely to have it mm -hmm. You know, if I if I have if I if I make good frugal decisions, which I do not always do, mm -hmm. um, but I am more likely to to abide by that if I have some kind of plan. Yeah, it's uh, orientating towards f future potential. Yeah, rather than I mean, like it's, yeah, like it's I am I am, I am going to need this money next month, mm -hmm. um, or the month after, or the month after that, or ten years from now. Mm -hmm. You know, being an adult is when you start talking about insurance. Mm -hmm. Fuck. Yeah, when you when your adulting life is in order, um, and you keep tinkering with it to keep it going, but if it, when you stop it, you know, it kind of it it stops. But it, it, I don't know. It just reminds me for some reason when you were talking, it it popped into mind the this kind of goofy analogy of, um, and we talked about. Or I I brought this example up. You know, last week. Uh, American nuclear reactors and Russian nuclear reactors, the stereotypes from the Cold War of, mm -hmm. um, in an American nuclear reactor, you keep going on pro, uh, maintenance to keep it operational, otherwise it shuts down. But in a Russian uh, nuclear reactor, you keep maintenance going to stop it from blowing up. Like, you, it's mm -hmm. the, the different end states of it. You know, a well-structured adult life, you keep it going so that it doesn't stop, as opposed to, like, when you're out of control, you're just doing everything you can to keep it from exploding. Yeah, and I think that I don't know. I think that there's room for both kinds of life. Mm -hmm. um, I've definitely been in both positions. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know that either one of them is, is sort of exclusively a, adult. But yeah, there's definitely a revision of priorities, one might say. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and, and I mean, ultimately, we, we, we made a note at the bottom of the show notes for this. Um that I think sums up everything here, which is situations are always more complex than any advice allows for. Yeah. Yeah. Let's not let's not kid ourselves that we can distill adulting down and and have some sort of meaningful advice for it yeah. in one podcast. I don't know. I just like to think about it as as yeah, the, the, the little bits of not just the little bits of maintenance that that I do on my life, mm -hmm. but the ways in which doing that maintenance changes my thinking. Like the ways in which you 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 start um you know, trying to, to, to fix your car instead of running it into the ground with the knowledge that you will buy another you, you will get another car that you run into the ground. Mm -hmm. It is the 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 notion that some things are are permanent. Uh, and that includes tedium. Mm -hmm. You know that includes that includes honorable work. Mm -hmm. You know I will presumably be be putting my laundry away for the rest of ever, and that seems perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. um, and I find I find embarrassing amounts of happiness in it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if you should be embarrassed by that. Uh, regardless of whether I should be embarrassed by oh. it, I am. Okay. <laughs> I mean. As opposed to you know, being being awed by the the MLG level strats that I have developed mm -hmm. in the time that I would have spent putting away my laundry, uh, I instead like parcel out that ten minutes or whatever mm -hmm. to just fold my clothing and put it away in an act of what can only be described as bourgeoisie decadence are you the kind of person <laughs> that takes a shirt and then folds it in half lengthwise tucks in the, the sleeves and then folds it in half again or are you the person that try folds before folding lengthwise I will be honest I have never put that much thought into it oh okay well how do you fold I, your shirts I fold in the little sleevey bits yeah and then I fold it over on itself a couple of times and ah. I put it in a pile with a bunch of shirts that look like it ah I see <laughs> Spoilers, I own a lot of green shirts. 
Um, well, I, I mean, we've been we've been kind of talking about adulting in a in a general sense in terms of like negatives and positives, or at least you know, kind of trying to describe what it is. But um, when we were doing the pre-show for this, um, it reminded me of a, of a phrase, and I've been writing it down in my journal for the last couple months in terms of tending the garden. Hmm. You know, and adulting and tedium and whatnot tends to kind of be analogous to to garden. Like, you, if you want to have a beautiful garden, or if you want to have specific kinds of outcomes or flowers in the garden or vegetables or whatever, you know, you have to lay down the the, the foundations for it, and then you have to continuously maintain it, watering, weeding, and whatnot. I dig it. Gardening sucks. Yeah, I mean, I it's actually, you know what? Sarah said the same thing this morning when we were talking about uh, the potential future house that we might move into. It's because gardening sucks. And I said that I'm looking forward to potentially gardening, sure. but I'm going to have to lose some, you know, work, for example, in order to have more time to do yeah, it. Yeah, it sucks in the sense, like, I know, I know lots of people who enjoy gardening. I have, at times, enjoyed gardening. Mm-hmm. But gardening is a lot of work, mm-hmm. um, and anybody who tells you it's easy is lying. <laughs> expensive. Um, no, because people will always tell you it's easy. People who are good at gardening, it's like, be, yeah, yeah, they'll be like, I don't know, it's totally fine. All you have to do is, like, dig and mulch and water and seed and then water and then mulch and then a bunch of other things that I used that, that I used to know the words for because I used to be a landscaper. Mm-hmm. And it's a lot of work. Um, but the result is, that, yeah, you get this sort of, like, you, you get this thing that isn't just pretty... It isn't just functional, like depending on the kind of garden you want, mm-hmm. but it is it is yours. It reflects who you are. It reflects the work that you put into it. It's something you can enjoy. Um, like in, and I mean, and I mean, but it also and, and it also reflects um, the the sort of situation that it exists in. Mm-hmm. I mean, there are catastrophes that can happen to gardens. Mm-hmm. There are, you know, like like. Rainstorms, windstorms, that kind of thing. Snow can do a number on it. Uh, construction, pollution. Um, and there are all, and there are also like all kinds of boons that gardens experience. Like there, there is a sense in which we, you can that garden that garden metaphor goes real far. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, in in terms of of what it means to, I think, achieve an outcome that that is intentional Mm -hmm. and part of that is rolling with those punches and whether those punches are you don't have time to deal with your garden right now Mm -hmm. or whether those punches are you know someone accidentally dumped a uh, you know a backhoe into it when they shouldn't have Mm -hmm. and I think what that translates to in in the in terms of adulting in terms of, of God, every time I say the word adulting, it sounds stupider. I realize it, it it's the title of the podcast is sitting right above me, but yeah. um, in terms of being autonomous and planning for your future, is the importance of you know building healthy relationships with the people and objects in your life, mm-hmm. and I think that yeah, that does come with it with the idea that. It isn't temporary. Mm-hmm. I mean, one of the things that is true about university, um, more often than not, and we do, I think, segregate student life and 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 post, like post university life, mm-hmm. post college life, or whatever, as as that division, mm-hmm. which seems weird because you're like a fully cognizant adult. You're doing lots of grown up grown up things. You've got to run your own bills and et cetera, et cetera. Look at look after yourself, but it's. Um, University is transitory. It's like it's like a very educational airport. Like mm-hmm. you are you are there to go somewhere else, mm-hmm. and so is everyone that you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, in that context, they're looking to move on, mm-hmm. and then you get out, and you're you're now, for the most part, there wherever there happens to be. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you're you're still like like there's still a journey involved in it, but it isn't as transitory as something like university. Mm-hmm. And it also means that the people around you aren't, you know, at the end of the year, they aren't just going to disappear. 
mm-hmm. they're going to be around forever, maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that that becomes really important. I say this not having a whole lot of experience with it, having um, gone to university in the same town that I live in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess um, I know that... How do, how, how would be the best way to describe this analogy? Probably because I did army cadets and whatnot, and there was always that belief that you're going to stay in touch with everybody, you know, all through throughout. Oh, the, the like summer, the like summer camp, the summer, the summer camp friends, the uh, you know people who go on. Uh, it's the same deal with uh, people who go on cruises, and you happen to find the one other Canadian couple there, and you and you bond over the fact that you're. You that's the only thing you have in common is you both happen to be Canadian in a in a foreign situation. Been on a cruise. No, I've never. Okay, because this sounds like an elaborate cruise fantasy. No, it's just my parents have, and they talk about their friends from Canada, and I'm okay. like, yeah, do you still talk to them? No, and that's that's one of the things that I learned from Army Cadets and, and everything else is uh, you get exposed to a lot of people, and you get forced into a lot of interesting, fantastic situations, and then you go away, and only a very small percentage of that carries on into your life. And I think university is the same deal. You meet a lot of interesting people, a relatively small amount will, will still be there long periods afterwards in, in, in the same meaningful sense in the same meaningful way mm-hmm. it's all about you know the people that come and go from your life their lives but yes tending the garden yeah so I, I, I mean in that context uh, building healthy relationships with people and, and, and thinking of those as long term relationships mm-hmm. I'm in a lot of long term friendships that I really enjoy mm-hmm. I have the the good fortune of meeting a lot of people where I, and I think I've said this before, where I, where I think, you know, if I, if I do right by this person, they will not only be my friend forever, mm-hmm. they will be a friend worth having forever. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that makes me really happy. Yeah. In some sense, you're planting a quality plant. You're investing in, in a good quality thing that you want to nurture over time. I don't know. I think that I, I don't know that I think of it as me gardening that relationship so much as them gardening me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I am <laughs> quietly planting myself in their garden. Uh, that makes you sound like an invasive people seed. Yeah, basically. Uh, I'm a, I am an invasive species. Uh, I see. I'm like a weed. Yeah. A useful weed. <laughs> sure. <laughs> And I mean, that also means, I mean, not just in the sense of, of having really like, like thinking about long-term relationships with people, but also with objects, I think. Mm-hmm. I have a lot of relationships with objects, with my computers and, you know, my, my studio equipment and even just like stupid pieces of furniture and whatnot where I'm like, like I look at something and I'm like, how long am I going to have this? You know, the, 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 I think the thing all, all always comes when, uh, when you're like, am I going to move with this, mm-hmm. <laughs> or or not? And it would, and if the answer is no, why would I get it in the first place? That is why you buy high quality items like a Dyson. No, it 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 you mate preventative maintenance, ongoing care. It will never let you down. Why are we still talking about vacuum cleaners? Because that is what adults do. We create podcasts, and we tend to gardens, and we talk about Dyson vacuum cleaners. Please help me. This podcast brought to you by Dyson. They didn't pay us. They didn't pay us. (laughs) God. (laughs) No, I mean, the other, I think the other awful boring thing about being adults is, yeah, is, is having a budget and living in it and having a budget that sort of grows and adapts and... Um, budgets can either be glorious or torturous. I have lived through both. Mm-hmm. Um, we're not about to offer a bunch of budgeting advice because budgeting is deeply situational. Yep. Um, but we will throw some links in the show notes if that's a thing you're into. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. I think the, the larger thing, and you wrote this note in the free show notes, mm-hmm. is... Planting trees. Yeah. Like to further extend this gardening metaphor. Yeah. Now this, I, I stole this from, it's a Greek proverb. And I'm going to change change it to be a little bit more inclusive. But the, the proverb is basically, um, society grows great when people plant trees under whose shade they won't sit. 
Mm. So that's not where I was going with that, but I, oh. but I, but I'm excited. Well, that's that's what I wrote yeah. down for the the plant trees bit is the idea that you lay down good quality stuff for the future, even if it's not something that you're going to directly benefit from. I guess yeah, like, like and, that, and that's where we get into the the bits of um being an adult that involved being responsible and accountable to a community, mm. uh, or being, the future, being part of things. But I, I mean, I'm, I'm even just thinking of, of planting trees in the sense of flowers are also seasonal. Like, if we want to really just squeeze that gardening metaphor for everything it's worth, what you really want to plant are trees. You want to plant things that are that are going to last regardless of season, regardless of how the wind changes, mm-hmm. and that are going to grow stronger and stronger with time. And how we do that is, I think, the exact same way that you garden. Not by throwing water on your friends, but with care, with uh, mindfulness, Mm -hmm. and maybe with the, the recognition that, I mean, not all trees grow the way we need them to. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, we talked a bunch about, about building relationships, but there is also, like, for, for, for all of the people I have in my life, there are a lot of people I have left behind. Yeah. Well, sometimes... And, some, or, and, and similarly, there are people who have left me behind. Well, and just there are sometimes, uh, again, with the tree metaphor, um, some trees grow faster and their shade ends up choking out other other smaller trees that you know need that light as well. I think this metaphor is literally dead. I think that we're <laughs> taking it as far as we can. <laughs> yeah, like I've definitely had that conversation where where you know like people people and I grow apart, or we're like actually maybe we don't want to hang out anymore. Um, and there are lots of different versions of that conversation. Time to harvest our friends. What? Cut down those trees. What? What? Dyson. Fuck. <laughs> I hate you. You can't hate a good product. I double hate you. <laughs> we were talking about something serious and and. I'm and sorry. Yes. Building, building, building things that grow stronger over time. Yes. Here we are. Anti fragility. And... To, to quote, to quote Talib. Sure. No. I I don't know. I I, I think that in some ways codifying it is is weird but it is it is sort of one of the is one of those things that I think about when I when I meet new people and when I start doing things with new people mm-hmm. is like how does how does this fit in with the rest of my life not just like you know the the 70 to 10,000 years that I have stretching out ahead of me but like all of my other priorities mm-hmm. and where that sits and that I think is a really silly and weird way to think about it but it is the way that I do it because uh, I haven't thought of anything better if you have something better you should leave in the comments I think it's sufficient to say that uh, for as much as we hate that adulting is a thing or at least it's become a thing it's it's something that requires you know, intentionality, it requires work, and it's not something that we have easy answers for. And also, um, there are lots of people who will, who will say that what we think of now as adulting is, is what was classically known as being alive. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that is definitely the, 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 the mark of sort of older generations, I think, mm-hmm. uh, who quite plainly don't deal with the same kinds of pressures Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) like economic pressures environmental pressures Mm -hmm. Um, but also I mean it it just sort of fails to take into account that things that are done deliberately often turn out better Mm -hmm. like things that are done with care Mm -hmm. shockingly um, have a tendency to work out and then that is for for good reasons. So it is it is weird to 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 hear people who 
who discount it Mm -hmm. when we know that doing things deliberately, doing things with care, doing things while having a plan, uh, even if that is a plan that needs to change all the time, Mm -hmm. is better than just going, well, wing it. Mm -hmm. Although there's always a certain amount of room for winging it. Yeah. This one got really weird. It did get really weird. Also because you wouldn't stop talking about vacuum cleaners. Yeah, there was you were talking there uh, right at the end, and I was honestly about to jump in about the Dyson, but I didn't want to derail the, the point you were trying to make. So you're doing it now instead. I appreciate that. Yeah, I had to wait until the very end to, to bring it back in. Oh. Anyway. We have two Dysons at home, by the way. God! The, the decadence! Could you not spare one? Well, it's a stand-up one, and then... No, the, I don't even care. The, Stop talking about your vacuum cleaner. The battery one. Oh, the God. We needed it for the dog hair. What are you even going to do when you get married? No one will be able to give you a vacuum cleaner because you already have two perfect vacuum cleaners. Yeah, pretty much, because they're good quality. You don't Jesus have to get rid of them. Christ. No bags. <sighs> oh, <laughs> anyway. <sighs> you can leave us comments about adulting, um, and we will we will chat with you. You can find us on... Uh, Twitter and our website and on Facebook and uh, now on our brand new Patreon mm-hmm. um, so you can help us make uh, more quality vacuum cleaner related content. Yes, because Dyson is stingy and will not give us any money. Yeah, that. Yeah, that. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, um, we look forward to chatting with you and uh, generally hanging out um, and talking about the very the varying honorable challenges of our lives. Mm -hmm. He's so much. I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. And we're signing off. Stay awesome. I just went to a whole neutral level. Yeah, that went to a whole weird place that I'm not really prepared to deal with.